Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'm really excited. I got a package in the mail of my Longfield Gardens order. So I'm really excited about this. So I'm gonna share with you what I bought and then maybe we'll get some of these started in some soil today. Come with me and let's take a peek at my Longfield Garden order. Okay, this box has been sitting here kind of open and airing out a little bit for a few days. I did inspect it when I first got it and I checked to make sure that everything is doing well and it is. So without any further ado, let me share with you what I bought from Longfield Gardens this spring. First off, ranunculus. I got the ranunculus, tomer pink and white, um, 25 counts of each. And they came in this package like this. And so these are the pink, and there's 25 of them in here, and they look like little uh, dried up spiders. There's more of them in here. These are the uh, Tomer White, 25 of them. All right, next I bought uh, Liatris Spicata Blazing Star. These come in little corms, you might call them bulbs, and um, they grow the feathery foliage and then a tall spike of purple flowers. They're also called Gay Feather or Blazing Star or Liatris. And I'm definitely going to be pre-sprouting them in some uh, containers. I don't know if I'm gonna do that in this video or not. Okay, so three bags of 24 of those. And then my dahlias. Okay, first up, I've got one package of three tubers of Gallery Monet. Now these are a gorgeous white with purple flower. They're shorter, so they're only about um, 13 inches tall and they're designed to be on the front of your border or on a patio container or something like that. They're not one of the big tall dinner plate style. Next up, I ordered some cactus yellow star dahlias. Again, a bag of three. Um, these will get to be three to three and a half feet tall. Um, and they are yellow, as you might guess from the yellow star. I've never grown a cactus type dahlia and I'm eager to see how these do. I have some more of the gallery series. These are gallery singer. And again, these will be short. They're only gonna be about 12 inches tall. And these are red and um, there's three, um, three tubers in that bag. And finally, I ordered some HS Flame Dahlias. These are single flowered and beautiful red with yellow colors. And these will grow to be about two and a half to three feet tall. And again, have red with yellow um, on the flowers. I'm excited to get into these. I wanna pre-sprout my dahlia tubers and uh, get them going so that we get earlier blooms this season. So let's do that. By the way, I know everybody in blog land, everybody in YouTube world has already pre-sprouted their dahlia tubers. I'm not doing anything new here. I'm just doing the stuff that needs to be done and the timing of it. Sorry, I'm later than a lot of other YouTubers because really because my order just came in. So yeah, you've already seen how to deal with dahlia tubers in the spring. I'll just give you the quick recap on it. I'm not expecting that you think I'm doing anything new or uh, ingenious or anything spectacular here. Just come along with me and let's have fun getting our hands dirty today. First, I'm gonna go out and get some pots to put these in. And um, so let's go dig around in the garage. Oh boy, it's a scary dungeon kind of situation in here. All right, looking for pots. I think, I think we've organized them and put them all on the other side. So I think we have to go over here. Mm, what will I use? I mean, we have a few to choose from. <laughs> I think these will work. Let's take them. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do with each of these four varieties is inspect the tubers, make sure they're not mushy, make sure there's nothing wrong with them. So I'm gonna do them one type at a time. These are Dahlia Cactus Yellow Star. Here's one clump, here's the second clump, and here's the third clump. I do have some extra tubers hanging around in here. Oh look, they sent me four. Yeah, there were only supposed to be three in there, but they sent me four, so that was nice. And then here's a little baby tuber that got broken off of one of the others. 
looks like it's uh, not got a neck or a growth point, so probably not needed. Oh, and here's another one. Okay, so this also doesn't have a neck or a growth point, so I don't think this one is going to be viable on its own either. All right, so to inspect them, first I'm looking for anything that is moldy or mushy or gross. And I'm not seeing anything on this one. This one looks pretty good. I do have some tubers, though, that are like hanging by a thread. I'm going to cut those off. Now, this has a nice strong neck on it. I just don't know if it has a growth point on it or not. But do you see how it was just barely connected there? I don't know. I might be doing the wrong thing by cutting that off, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. And look at this, too. Maybe this is a viable artery system or stem system through which this one can grow from here. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not an expert on dahlias and I really don't know what I'm doing. So mainly at this moment, I'm just looking for disease and I don't see any. I see lots of roots. I suppose someone who knows more about this than I could determine whether or not this could be separated into multiples, but I'm just going to leave this one as is and plant that all as one. Okay, this clump here, do I see any disease or damage on it? I do not. Again, this one is just hanging by threads. I don't know if that's viable or not, but I cut this one off, but now I'm second guessing that I did that. I'm just going to leave these on here. No harm, no foul in my book, I guess. So there's this one and this one and this one that are just hanging by these root type of threads. and. I don't think it'll hurt anything if I plant them, so I'm just going to leave them connected and plant them. Now, I think what we're looking at here, I think this is a growth point, and I think this is a growth point. But I am not certain. So, I don't know what I'm looking at here, guys. So, I'm going to plant that whole thing. Any disease or grossness over here? No, everything is nice and firm, nothing, mo uh, nothing mushy. Now this is clearly a growth point here and here. Can you see those? There and there. I think, I don't know, but this is another loose one. I'm just going to plant that as is. I'm not taking chances, folks. No chances here. And here, do we have any disease or damage? There's a growth point. I don't want to cut it off. It's already started to grow. These are all hanging again loose like the other ones. I just don't know what to do with that, so I'm just going to leave it. But there's nothing mushy here. These look healthy as far as all that's concerned, so... I'm just going to plant all four of these the way they are. So let me get some potting mix into my pots. All right, this is potting mix out of a bag. It does have fertilizer in it. It's not seed starting mix. It has chunks in it. You can see some of the big, bigger chunks in there. It's somewhat moist, but it doesn't really hold together. I'm just going to add a smidge of water to each of these. I don't want to make them sopping wet because I don't want the bulbs to rot, but I'm just going to add just a smidge more water to each of those. Just something to jump start those dahlias and tell them it's time to start growing. All right, and now I'm just going to set this down in here. Get all the roots down in there and kind of nestle it into the soil and then cover it up to last year's depth. Kind of like that. And that's it. Now I'm just going to wait for those uh, growth points to start growing. This one's pretty big. I hope I'll be able to fit it in here. Kind of 
kind of a little bit sideways. All right, I think, I don't know what I'm doing, but I think that these are going to be fine. Um, I didn't want to plant them too deep. I don't want to plant them too wet, but I also don't want to have them dry out. So I'm going to just call this good. I'm going to label them and put them under the lights. And hopefully within a few weeks or so, we'll start seeing some green growth coming up and sprouting. All right, and that is the process I'm going to use for all of them. Um, again, I am no expert here. There are so many people out there on YouTube who know so much more about dahlias. Go to Longfield Gardens website. They'll teach you stuff there. Florette Flower Farm, of course, Garden Answer. Danielle at North Lawn Flower Farm. Um, who else? Uh, all kinds of people out there who know a lot about dahlias and how to deal with them. I'm just following their lead and I'm making a hot mess of it. I feel like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but I'm just doing the best I can, right? I mean, that's all we can do, right? Just try stuff, use your best judgment, learn as much as you can, away you go. All right, I've got four gallery singers, uh, four yellow stars, four HS flames, and three of the gallery Monets. And I'm gonna see if I can get them all to fit on the bottom shelf on the back under that light back there but I'm thinking they aren't all going to fit there so I'm just going to do my best but they might just have to live with the kind of ambient light that they get from being alongside the um, the light system I don't know we'll see I finally got them all in there it's a tight fit and there's no more gonna fit in there so uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do if I need more light space because all my lights are used up at this point except this one little half tray right there so huh
Okay, I have three bags of these Liatris Spicata, which are also known as Blazing Star, or I think also Gay Feather, I think is another name. These are 24 count bags. There's three of them, so I have 72 of them. My last frost date isn't until April 11th, and even then, that's my 50-50 average last frost date. There's a good chance, 50% chance in fact, that we'll have a frost after April 11th. So the instructions on these say to plant them in the ground after danger of frost has passed. Well, my danger of frost still exists, So, but I see that they're sprouting in the bag. And when I feel them through the bag, I don't want any of them to start getting mushy or dried out. And I don't really want them to grow anymore in these bags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these old containers that used to have annuals in them. And I'm going to put these corms into some soil in these containers. I'll probably, for the small ones, I'll probably put one bulb per container. And I have some other ones back here that are a little bit bigger and they might get two bulbs per container. And that way I'll be able to store these bulbs outside as long as there's no overnight frost. And I'll keep them watered. I'll put them in my plant stash area on my driveway. And hopefully they'll pre-sprout and start growing and actually be ready to plant in the ground after the danger of frost. Now the benefit of doing this this way, instead of just holding them until the danger of frost has passed, is that I don't have to worry about are they starting to grow in here. Also, I'll be able to pull these trays of potted up bulbs into the garage if there, for some reason, is a cold night expected. So I think this is going to be the best way for me to get my money's worth out of these liatris. So uh, that's what I'm planning to do. I love this plant. I've had this plant in every garden that I've ever had. And in this current garden, I do have them in a, like a small clump of them, but I want a lot more. I love their form and texture. I love the spikiness of them. I love the color of them. I love that the butterflies and bees love them. They're just a really great plant. So I'm looking forward to having them here in this garden. I've gathered up several types of containers to use for this project. The first ones I found were these 12 packs of annuals, and I think they're about four inches deep and about two by three in dimension. These are slightly shorter. I wish they were five inches deep because these call for being planted, oh, three inches deep. So this will be fine. I thought they wanted to be five inches deep. So no, these only need to be three inches deep, which is great. I'll put an inch of soil down on the bottom here, and then I'll put the bulb in, and then I'll cover them up to the top with three inches more of soil. And so that's these containers. I also found this tray of containers, which, what did I buy in here? It looks like I bought some ground covers. Oh, probably the Ajuga that I bought last year came in this handy 12 pack. So that's four dozen. And then I went scrounging looking for more. I didn't have any more deep narrow containers like this. So I found these, which come in 10 packs, and they're a slightly larger size. And so I have enough here to do this, um, the last two dozens of them if I use these Proven Winners cans as well. But I might put two in each of these. I might not. I don't know. It says you want to plant them five inches apart in the landscape. That will give them room to expand and uh, multiply over the years. But if you do put them closer together, like if I put two of these in here, it would totally be fine. It's just that I would have to divide them sooner after a year or two rather than waiting two or three or four years to divide them. Yeah. Okay. So I have enough containers here to do all of these. I have 72 bulbs, which is six dozen. I have six dozen containers here. So that's where I'm planning to put them. You might have noticed I didn't wash these containers. These were sitting in my garage all winter and they have dirt in them from last year and I see some spider webs and we're just gonna deal with it. I'm just gonna live life on the edge and take a risk that there's no disease in any of these. A better gardener would probably wash these in soapy water. I'm just not gonna do that. All right, so let me get my soil together. My soil for this project is going to be a combination of this Harvest Organics potting mix, and if I need it, some of this perlite. Now, let's see. It's definitely wet. It does feel pretty heavy. It's full of composted organic material. I think it's a peat-free uh, mix. I might be wrong about that. Um, so yeah, it's pretty heavy and wet, full of good compost. So I am gonna add in some perlite, probably quite a bit to lighten up the soil. Uh, 
Oh, who am I kidding? All right, yeah, that is much looser and lighter. That's going to be better. It won't hold as much water, so it won't root. Uh, it won't rot the corns. All right, yeah. I'm going to put about one inch of soil in the bottom of each of these cells here, roughly. I'm not going to be measuring. Why use tools when you can use your hands? All right, some of them got a little bit more than I needed, so let me fix that. There we go, about one inch of soil in the bottom of each of these cells. Okay, now let's take a look at these uh, bulbs. Because I'm planting these while they've already sprouted, it's really easy to tell where the top and the bottom is, but if uh, maybe I'll find one that doesn't have sprouts on it yet so we can look at it. Yeah, here's one, okay. So this one doesn't have any sprouts on it yet, and so you might wonder, well, which is the top and which is the bottom? The one with the fine hairs is the top, and the end with the thicker, what look like more of a root system, that is the bottom. These are the roots, and this is what will turn into the top of the plant sprouting up. So I'm gonna put this up and this down, right in there. Now this one, Obviously, this is the top, and again, these are the roots for the bottom. One per cell. This is a bigger one than the other two, but again, here is uh, the sprouts. And if you look closely, you can see here's the mother plant, and then there's one, two, three side sprouts coming. So they've already started to divide up into multiple corms here. Compared to some liatris corms that I've bought at like Home Depot or Lowe's, these are really higher quality. They're bigger bulbs. They uh, are more clearly ready to grow and uh, none of them are shriveled and none of them are moldy. So I've bought some at the big box store that have had those problems before. So this from Longfield Gardens was a really good purchase, I think. Now I have 12 bulbs inside the container, and now I'm just gonna cover the container, cover all of these with soil all the way to the top. There we go. I'm gonna firm it down a little bit just so I don't have any air pockets. All right, there we go. So, First tray done, five more to do. So I have filled three of the 12 pack trays, one of the long and skinny 12 pack trays, one 10 pack tray that I put two bulbs in each one and then I have three pots left over. And now I need to figure out where I'm gonna put them. Now, I could keep them here in the warm space, 65 degrees or so, and under lights. And eventually after they sprout above the ground, they'll need light. So I could keep them inside and I could store them under the lights and let them grow on under the lights until after my last frost. Or I could put them outside right now and just let them sprout in these containers whenever Mother Nature says it's time to do that outside. But if I were gonna do that, there wouldn't be much of an advance on the season. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them inside until they sprout above the soil 
once they start sprouting above the soil, then I will start to harden them off outside and let them spend enough time outside until I can finally just move them outside. Um, I don't have room under my lights. I have three shelves of lights and they're all full right now. So I could go get another shelf full of lights for this top shelf, but um, I'd rather not spend that if I don't have to. And I don't think I have to. So I'm gonna keep them inside here where it's warm until they sprout above the soil. And then at that point, I'll start moving them outside so that they can continue to grow on outside. Okay, they're gonna live on this shelf until they sprout above ground. Now. I forgot to talk about water. The soil that I put them in, oh, here's three more. I better put them up there too. Uh, the soil that I put them in was very, very moist because it had just come in from the uh, garden center outside. So it's very moist soil. I don't wanna continue to add water uh, to these until I see greenery above ground. At that point, uh, I will start to water them, but I'm not gonna do that now because I don't wanna rot the bulbs. So, all right, so they'll stay here until they sprout. Up here, I've got my ranunculus that I just put into the soil and down under the lights and beside the lights and kind of smashed in places like this, I've got my dahlias that I recently put in soil as well. So that takes care of everything that I ordered from Longfield Gardens. It, it took me three days and three different work sessions to get that whole order taken care of, but now it's done. I do have some more mail order things that I need to take care of, but a little bit at a time, right? So I did the highest priority things, the things that got here first and were sitting in their plastic bags the longest. I think I might have time, no, I don't have time before my evening plans start to do the other package, so another day. Thank you so much for joining me today as I take care of my mail order plants. I hope you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed what you saw and if you have any questions or comments, put them down in the comment section down below, just like always. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're having a great day in your garden, friends, and I will see you in another video real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.